welcome to our World Afro Celebration. Today, we delve in the inspiring stories about Afro hair. Join us as we hear of the stories from the staff with their cultural insights, journeys, and challenges as they embrace the natural hair. Join us as we celebrate World Afro Day Hi, my name is Tiana De Silva, a fifth grader, and I will be interviewing you today. I am Sarah Stevens, a grade six student. I will be your interviewer for the, today. My name is Brandon Barker, a grade five student. I will be your interviewer today. Can you share your personal journey embracing your natural hair? Well, it took a while for me to embrace my hair. When I was very small, around your age, my hair was straightened at a very young age because it was too hard to manage all the time. So eventually this became like everyday life for me and so I was like, yeah, straightened hair is normal. I'm supposed to straighten my hair. Until later on as an adult, I was like, okay, this is too much. Even though they said my natural hair was too much, my straightened hair was also too much. So that's when I decided to do the big chop when I was actually an adult because I went through all of my primary school and my high school years with straightened hair. So when I became an adult and I could make my own decisions, I decided to cut all of my hair off and start from scratch again. Interesting, interesting response, thank you. So can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. Do you have any more, would you like to say anything else? Well, after I cut off my hair, it took a while for me to embrace my natural hair because I didn't know what to do with it. So that's when I saw one of my teacher friends who had locks in her hair. So I was like, okay, I can try this. So I tried out the locks and I had locks in my hair for a very long time until I decided to cut it again. And then I put in my, I started combing my natural hair. I had relaxed hair for most of my childhood life. And over the last past five to six years is when I really started to embrace my natural hair, wearing natural styles, actually getting my hair combed and styled naturally and wearing twist outs and stuff like that. So it's been a few years since I've been wearing my natural hair. Okay, do you have anything else to share with us? Well, natural hair is definitely a bit more challenging to deal with than relaxed hair, but I think it's worth it. I had natural hair up until I was about 12 and then my hair was relaxed, straightened and I thought it was the best thing ever because I had straight long hair and then my hair started to do some crazy stuff like fall out, my scalp would get extremely burnt when I had to get it retouched, it was very sensitive and I decided one day in my 20s that was enough. So then I cut it all off and then began to let it grow. And it was growing the way God intended it to grow. And I enjoyed it. But it was very, very thick. And I kind of got tired of combing it. And I thought about it. Maybe I should just relax it again just for ease of it. And then I thought about all the bad things that happened when I had straightened hair. And I decided to lock my hair. And I did that and I had locks for about 14 years. That was an awesome time. And then I decided I needed a change and I cut my locks all off and enjoyed my natural curls once again. And then again, I got tired of combing my hair. So I decided it was time to lock it back and I did that. Amazing answer. Is there anything else that you'd like to say? I'm never straightening my hair again. How long have you been natural? Well, five, five-ish years, maybe five or six years. If I tell you that, you'll know how old I am. But it's been a very, very long time. Yeah, around 15 years now. Are there any role models or public figures who inspire you regarding natural hair? When it comes to like natural hair, there's a natural, um, hair care specialist. I think she's a hairdresser. I think her name is Janice. I think it's Janice Mills. I think I got it right. Um, I follow a lot of her social media and she does a lot of good and positive things for natural hair. So I would say locally that would be one of the persons that when it comes to natural hair and knowing what to do, 
that I look up to and also like internationally, Jackie Aina, because she definitely, like she has a twist out stone. I don't think I have many role models considering that many people around me also have the either straightened hair or they like to put in weave or wear wigs and so on and so forth. So right now I don't really have any role models concerning that. I just like my hair natural because to me it's easier that way. How do you think World Afro Day helps in celebrating cultural diversity? I believe that Afro Day helps us all to embrace who we are. Enjoying our natural hair Loving our natural hair in turn helps us to love ourselves. I think World Afro Day will help to show how diverse, because no, all natural hair is not the same. Some people have it more curly, some people have it more naturally textured, some people, all of it is not the same. So if everybody was to wear an Afro for Afro Day, it would show the beauty of all different styles or all different types of hair. And I hope that it shows that. I think it helps by just including and incorporating like the natural like elements of our culture, um, encouraging more people to come out into the spotlight and wear the hair that we're given and wear the hair that we're growing ourselves. Can you share a positive experience where your natural hair was celebrated? Yes. So earlier I said I had locks for about 14 years, so it was very, very long very long much longer than it is now and people were always in awe of my hair and it gave me an opportunity to share with them why i had natural hair and why i decided to lock it and in doing that i had other people who said you know what i think i'm going to embrace my natural hair journey and they did that so for me that was a very positive thing this is a funny story because when i went to college in the united states um, I worked at a daycare center with a lot of little people. Most, it was a predominantly white state, so it had a lot of um, Caucasian children. And so they're the ones who actually liked my natural hair the best. So when I always came with it plait in different styles, they were like, teacher, I love your hair. Teacher, how do you do that? I want my hair like that. So um, it was actually a lot of the little kids who um, loved the natural hair the most. All the time when people see me wearing my natural hair out, even at school, and the kids are like, oh, my hair, like we have the same hair. So I go to places all the time, whether I'm on, in, at the supermarket or in the street. And because sometimes it's something that we don't really see too often, a lot of people are just kind of like, oh, wow, like that's possible. Like I can wear my hair like that and it looks cute. And it's like, you know, it's trendy. It still like blends in with what we're doing nowadays. So I feel like when I go different places, a lot of people are kind of like, I won't say like surprised to see it, but it's like embraced more and celebrated much more. Have you faced any challenges because of your Afro hair? If yes, how did you overcome them? The first time I cut off my hair and I had it in like a short Afro, um, I got many surprise shocked responses because like, girl, you cut off your hair. Why you cut off your hair? And I was like, what's wrong with it? So eventually I got kind of self-conscious and I started wearing like hats and scarves to hide the fact that my hair was cut off. But eventually I was like, this makes no sense. It's my hair. This is what it's supposed to look like. So eventually it took a while because of the responses I got from like friends and peers, but I just Something came over me one day and I woke up like, yeah, this is my hair. I'm going to embrace my hair. And so I started, you know, proudly wearing my natural hair. I would more so say um, lint retention because especially with having natural hair, as a child, my hair was doing, it was doing its own little thing. It wasn't really growing as much as I wanted it to. So the main challenge that I faced was more of finding like the products that work for my hair and my hair type, my hair texture, and finding things that would work for me to make sure that my hair grows to the length that I want it to be. What does your Afro hair mean to you culturally and personally? Well, culturally, we have to remember that our roots are in Africa and they embrace their natural hair. This is a sign of beauty, our natural hair. And personally, it was a long, it took a long time for me to embrace my hair. 
and that journey that I went on, the struggles, the criticisms that I faced, it took a long time for me and it showed me how to be more independent and how to, be, um, to love myself the way that I am. For me, culturally, it's more of embracing my roots um, because wearing natural hair and even doing natural hairstyles go dates back to even like the slavery days for me. So it's more of connecting with my culture. Um, in terms of me personally, it's just more of a journey itself. Um, taking care of it, learning how to take care of, it, care, care of it over the years has been an experience. So it's all about learning and growth. How important is community support in embracing natural hair? I think it's very important for the community to embrace all of our natural hair. I think we have now gone into a culture of where we like um, look at all of the celebrities and see them with their long straight hair with weave and wigs and now that everybody thinks, oh, that's supposed to be the thing, we're supposed to look like that, which in truth that we are not. And a lot of the times it's the community themselves that always go down on the children who have their natural hair, larger hair shot, it's so picky. Where you have it out like this, it's not looking professional. But I find that if we start to embrace our hair and our natural looks and have the community behind that, I think it'll be um, have the students and children and many even adults to start embracing their natural hair. I think it plays a big part because when your community is like one that's open and just like provides like a safe space when it comes to like wearing your natural hair and embracing your natural hair. I think that encourages a lot of people to want to wear their natural hair more. What advice would you give to others, especially children, struggling to embrace their natural hair? Well, back in my days, I'm now starting to sound old, um, we didn't, I didn't know what to do with my natural hair because YouTube and all of those Instagram tutorials weren't much of a thing. But today, since you all seem to live on TikTok and YouTube and Instagram, there's so many different ways that now that you know how to do and comb and style your natural hair. And I think that's a great way to start. My advice would be that your natural hair journey is your own. You can't look at somebody else who has a different hair texture or maybe a different hair length to yours and compare your journey to their journey. Um, so don't compare. And in addition to that, find the products that work for you. Because for me, since I've kind of started getting into the routine of using my own products that, my own product combination that works for me, my hair is has been growing a lot longer. It's probably like down in my back now and I'm really proud of that so finding the products that work for you and just embracing the journey your own journey what do you envision in the future of natural hair acceptance I am hoping because now that a lot of people are on the natural hair trend that we have many more young ladies like yourself loving and embracing their natural hair. I hope I don't see all of you coming down with weave all the way down to your ankles. I hope that you love the natural curls that you guys have and see that how beautiful you are with or without your natural hair. For me, I feel like we're already moving in a direction of acceptance as it pertains to natural hair because more people are moving away from the relaxer or the creamy crack and kind of like going back to doing like the natural hairstyles, even when it comes to like braids and the protective styles. I think we're already headed in the right direction. So for me, I feel like it's already starting to look like what it's supposed to look like as we're moving towards like the future. What changes would you like to see in society regarding afro hair? When it comes to society, because I went through that as well, I think that a lot of people seem to believe that straight hair is beautiful and curly hair is not so beautiful or it's not as professional as having your hair straightened. And I think that that is one concept that really needs to be eradicated from society because our hair does not define our professionalism. It is the way it grows. That's our natural hair and it should be embraced. 
mostly I would just like um, for everybody to have acceptance over it. A lot of people view natural hair as something that is unprofessional or it looks unkept or untidy. So I hope that in the future that everybody can embrace it and see the beauty that is natural hair. I would like to see more of it. More of it. Just more of it. Like everywhere, more of it. More hairdressers that cater to natural hair, not just like the styling but maintenance and hair care because that plays a huge role in um, maintaining your I guess the good quality of your hair and maintaining hair growth and preventing shedding and all of those bad things and breakage so for me it would be that. My name is Natalia Cozier and my hair is pretty and beautiful. I look pretty with my natural hair. I love my natural hair. Hi, my name is Amia Nicholson. I love my hair. It makes me feel beautiful. And I just love it. Hi, my name is Kiana Leslie. And I just want to send a positive note. Embrace your natural hair, love your natural hair, and don't feel embarrassed about it.